Welcome to another episode of Prior Power Principles. Today we're on episode five and our topic is a very wonderful topic. It's prior and soul winning. And today, Elder David is going to do our opening prayer. All right, let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we come to you because we are so needy of your spirit, of your grace. We just want to bow before you, open our hearts to you, acknowledge you as our Lord and our Father and our Savior. Father, we acknowledge that you sustain us, that you give us life. And we just acknowledge that as our creator, Lord, we give you all the honor and all the glory. We humble ourselves before you, Father, and we're asking that you would lift us up into your presence. Father, we come to you like the man and who had a friend who came to him at midnight and he had no bread to set before them. Lord, that's us. We have people here and we have no bread to set before them unless you give us your spirit, unless you give us that bread which came down from heaven, which was Jesus. Yes. Father, we're asking that you would fill our mouths with your words, that you would fill our hearts and our minds, that you would take possession of us. We're asking that you would rise up and glorify your name in our beings. Father, let us fear you and give glory to you for the hour of your judgment has come and worship you who made the heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Father, give glory to your name today because we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Elder David, how are you? How was your week? I'm blessed. It was a good week. Not easy week, but a good week. Praise the Lord. And again, we just wanted to remind you, if you have a prior request, please send your prior request to priorpowerprinciples at gmail.com. And we will pray with you. God is ready to pour out the blessing. So send us an email, priorpowerprinciples at gmail.com. So today, our prior focus is um, Elder David is going to pray specifically for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I will be praying for more intercessors, you know, for the spirit of intercession, interceding on the behalf of others. So as usual, we always start with giving a testimony. So I'll, I'll go ahead, Elder David, and share okay. my right. testimony, and then you can share yours afterwards. And All then right. after our testimony, we will do the prayers, the specific prayers. And then after the specific prayers or prayer focus, we will be talking about um, principles um, for, for prior and soul winning. So stay tuned. It's going to be exciting. It's, you're going to learn a lot of principles that you can also um, use. So um, it was very interesting, you know, Elder David. Ten years ago, I went to India, and it was just a vacation for three weeks. But usually when I go to, to my vacation, I always set aside one week where I just do purely evangelistic outreach. So I would find a church, and I would ask them, okay, I'm on vacation. I want to do something. So this particular time, I was in Mumbai, and that's about the center of India. And I found this church and I was there and I, you know, did the same thing. And it was exciting. They, you know, they, we went to a widow's home and, you know, the members, they helped to, you know, take care of the widows and we did some shopping and it was just exciting. And I also got a chance to share um, in the Sabbath, you know, the Sabbath. And I shared about um, the state of the dead. And I remember explaining about, um, you know, soul, you know, some people believe that the soul leaves the body after death. So I was explaining what happens when a person dies. And I used an illustration of a box. So a box is comprised of um, wood and nails. So if you no longer want a box, you take a hammer, you take out the 
the, the nails and you take the lumber. So you don't have a box anymore, right? You just have two things. So I was using that and just this week, I, um, you know, recently I got a chance to share with the same church again, Pat, the pastor, there's a new pastor now and he asked me to make a presentation for the AY. And while I, after I finished the presentation for AY, there was a young woman who said, I remembered your presentation 10 years ago with the box and the nails. And I was like, huh, who is that? Because I, I don't remember, like, you know, I could see the face, but I, I couldn't remember. And I'm like, really? You did? You did? And he was like, yes. And, and the girl was specific. She said the nails and the box. And I was like, yes, I remembered. I, I used that illustration. And, you know, it, it made me feel so blessed that after 10 years, um, I did a presentation and a young woman who was very young at the time, she could remember this illustration. And, you know, whenever I do um, presentations, I like to use, you know, I'm a teacher, so maybe it's inside of me, you know, too. But, you know, we learn more by seeing, by using illustrations. So I praise God for that. That's exciting. That It's a powerful testimony when that made such an impression on her mind that 10 years later, she can tell you what you said. That's, that's a God thing, you know? And, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a power that's outside of ourselves that gives us the ability to bring people to Jesus and to make the word of God come alive and to make Jesus real. This is not something you can do from a history lesson. You can talk about the history of Jesus, what he was like and what he did and stuff, but that doesn't make him real. Yeah. Now, we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a supernatural gift that God promised us. In fact, it's Jesus says, when he comes, he will take the things of mine and reveal them to you. He's going to reveal Jesus to us. He will make Jesus real and living and a friend and a, and a companion. And he will make our hearts fill them with his love for other people. And that's what we need. So I just want to tell you, um, uh, I think I've mentioned it, that uh, after... After I was born again, after my conversion, the Lord began to impress upon my heart that I needed to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and I've mentioned before that I grew up in an Adventist home. My father was a pastor, and I went to church all of my life. And, and yet, I don't remember um, hearing much about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just didn't hear about it. Didn't understand it that much. But God began to impress my mind that that is what I needed for Jesus to come become real and for me to have the power to make Jesus real to other people. So he began to put a burden on my heart as I began to study it, that, in, that in burden grew in intensity, stronger and stronger until finally one day on my bed, beside my bed, you know, a lot of things happened beside my bed. Uh, that's where the Holy Spirit came upon me. I get down on my knees beside my bed and just began to pour out my heart. Lord, I must have your spirit. I was witnessing every day uh, in New York City, and I just knew that without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that would, would transform anybody else's life, nothing that could bring them to conviction of sin, which is so necessary for them to be born again. You can tell them they're a sinner, but unless they see it by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you're helpless. You can't bring anyone to conversion. And finally, he just, he poured out his spirit on me and I was just praising God and I knew that he had filled me with his spirit. So it wasn't long. I remember going down to, uh, we were having a Sabbath morning uh, breakfast and went down there and there was a bible worker down there and a new lady was there young young lady and he was trying to share the sabbath with her she was uh, from another church and and uh, went to church on sunday and he would ex he, he was really good he explained it all, all this had the, all the scriptures and just laid them out very clearly very concisely it sound 
just as as logical and sensical and and legitimate as as you could ever make a presentation but she just wasn't getting it she just wasn't getting she says i just no i don't see it uh, you know i think one in seven is good enough as long as you give jesus one and he would explain it through the scriptures and nothing was happening i'm sitting here listening to that and i said lord unless we have your spirit there's nothing we can do nothing is going to change anybody's heart I said, give me your spirit. And I wish I knew what I had said. And it probably doesn't even matter. But I said one thing to her, just one sentence or so. And she broke down in tears and began to weep. And she just said, it's so hard. It's just so hard. And why she couldn't see it was because she realized that for her to make that change of beliefs from Saturday to Sunday was going to have a major impact on her life. It was going to be a tough decision. But now the Holy Spirit just had conviction, convicted her, and she saw it all. And, and she was able to just break down and acknowledge, okay, this is going to be really hard. But she accepted. She, she accepted that, that, that that was truth. So I thanked and praised Jesus. You know, that's what it takes. Whatever it was, it, it probably doesn't matter as much what I said as asking the Holy Spirit to do something that I couldn't do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it wasn't too long later, I was asked to preach down in lower Manhattan. It's not too far from the World Trade Centers. It's a beautiful old church and the pastor was gone and all the elders were gone on a, on a retreat and they asked me to preach down there. Mm -hmm. So I went, I went down there and I was, uh, the Lord gave me the topic of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So on the way, driving to the church, the Holy Spirit said to me, you need to know that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said, okay. Okay. And so when I got there, um, the Lord prepared the way, showed, showed me how to pray. And I said, you know, we're living in the time of the latter rain. And when the early rain fell, there was a lot of things that happened that people weren't accustomed to seeing. And it, and it didn't happen according to what they had previously understood, uh, according to the religion of the past. And a lot of things changed. And I said, we may be seeing change when the Holy Spirit is poured out. There's one thing we need to understand, and that is, is it according to the word of God? Mm -hmm. Not is it different than what I'm used to? Is it according to the word of God? And so the Lord had me say that before the sermon. And then I started opening the scriptures and I began to talk about everywhere in the New Testament where the people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I read it through them, every, every one of them. And um, every one but one time, uh, the disciples or the apostles laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And in uh, Acts 19, it says that um, they, he came to, what was it, Ephesus? Anyway, and uh, they said, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, we haven't even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. And he mm -hmm. said, well, into what then were you baptized? So there was something wrong with their baptism that kept them from receiving the Holy Spirit. So they said, well, we were, we were baptized into John's baptism, the baptism of repentance. So repentance is the step that prepares you to receive the baptism, but it's not necessary. It's, it, it's, the Holy Spirit is more than just being repenting of your sins. Mm, okay? yeah. uh, the first work of the Holy Spirit is to convict us of sin and to bring about conversion. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is another gift altogether than, than to be born again. They're separate and, and uh, some, you, some people can receive them at, at right at about the same time, but they're two separate blessings, two separate experiences mm -hmm. uh, with Jesus. And so I began to uh, read all these scriptures and just read through them and where they, where they prayed for them and laid hands on them and they began receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was just getting to the end of my sermon and a lady stood up in the middle of the 
congregation and she raised her hand. She, she said, would you pray for me and would you lay your hands on me so I can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Now, this was back in the 80s. I don't know about you, but I have never, up until that time, seen anybody ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I never had seen any minister lay hands on anybody and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now I understand why the Holy Spirit was saying to me in the car, you need to know that you have received the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I turned to the audience. This is very awkward. I mean, this just doesn't happen in a formal Seventh-day Adventist church, right? Yes. And so um, I'm praying, Lord, show me what to do. What, to, what should I do, Lord? And I turned to everybody and I said, I said, this is not something we're used to seeing in our churches, but is it biblical? Everybody's heads nodded up and down. I said, come on up to the platform. She came up to the platform. There was one elder that hadn't, or a deacon, or some one person that hadn't gone to the workers' meeting. And I said, would you join us? Took the mic out of the stand, and she knelt on the platform there. All of a sudden, I realized who this was. This was that young lady that was at the breakfast who had been struggling to accept the Sabbath. She mm -hmm. said, it was the same person. Here now she wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes divine appointments just follow you. <laughs> so I prayed for her and, I, and then I gave her the mic and I said, just pour your heart out to God and Jesus and tell him exactly what you need. And, and it was the most beautiful, simple prayer. She said, Jesus, you know, I just want to bring people to you. I need your spirit. It was the most beautiful prayer. And it was like heaven came down. It was the presence of Jesus just filled that place. Her heart was so simple, so broken, so open, so desiring of more of Jesus. That's all she wanted. And so then we laid hands on her and we and asked God to fill her with his, her Holy, with his Holy Spirit. I know. I know that she was filled with the Holy Spirit. Wasn't mm -hmm. talking in tongues or prophesying or anything, but the joy mm -hmm. of the Lord just filled her. Her face was radiant. She was just praising God, which is often what happens when you're really conservative and not really, uh, mm -hmm. not the kind mm -hmm. of person that gets uh, exuberant. <laughs> Oftentimes the case with Seventh-day Adventists because they're somewhat reserved, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's, just uh... want to praise, just wanted to praise Jesus because he knows people's heart. Perhaps you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps you need a connection with Jesus that would fill you with the love of Jesus, would make Jesus so, le so real, so present that when you talk about Jesus, people are convicted. They want him too. They will hunger and thirst for righteousness, and they will know that you've been with Jesus. Is that something you want? We're gonna pray about that in a minute. Yes. All right, thank you, Elder David, for that wonderful testimony. So now we're going into our prayer um, section, and I'll be praying for more intercessors. If Every time, Elder David, we need, you know, people to pray on behalf of others because, you know, souls are just locked away and they don't have the self-control or the self-will to offer a prayer for themselves and they're lost and they're in a dark place. But, you know, I remember when I was younger that, you know, I would hear testimonies from people directly and I would listen to the radio or the TV and I heard testimonies that goes like, oh, my grandmother prayed for me and my grandfather prayed for me. And I was like, what, what are they talking about? But, you know, as I got, as I got older, I realized, you know, some grandmothers pray for their children, pray for their grandchildren, prayed for their great-grandchildren. They were intercessors. 
you know, weeping and praying for those souls to be saved. And the, the, the people were just giving the testimony of what God has done. So, you know, that's my prayer today that God will make us into intercessor. And you don't have to be a grandmother to be an intercessor. Just want to remind you that you can be a young person and be filled with the Holy Spirit and praying mm -hmm. on behalf of a soul and pray that God will harvest that soul. Your prayer should go forth as, you know, as the spirit of prophecy says, as a sickle to harvest that soul for the kingdom of God. And then Elder David is going to be praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because as he says, we cannot accomplish anything without the Holy Spirit. So join us now as we seek the Lord in prayer. And before I pray my prayer, I just wanted to turn your attention, if you have your Bibles or you can read it after, um, Exodus 32, and I'm going to read a few verses, 11 to 14, and I'm going to be quick, okay? So Exodus 32, and you can pause the video if you're watch, re watching, and then you can read with us, you know, or read, read it by yourself. Exodus 32, 11 to 14. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. This is Moses talking to God. Verse 13, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidst unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And verse 14 says, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. If you want to read more, you can read more in the book, but I'm just going to stop there for now. So Moses prayed, Moses interceded, and God repented of what he was going to do. Let us pray. Oh, righteous eternal Father, we praise you for this moment, for this opportunity to come to you, to talk with you as a father, as a friend. Lord, we are helpless. We have nothing in our hands to bring. But Lord, simply to your cross we cling. Father, each day as we read your word and we are renewed, um, in the inward man is renewed day by day, we see more of the work that you have for us who have been renewed, Lord. You want us to go out and to spread the message of salvation and hope to a dying, hurt world. And today, Lord, I want to pray specifically for those souls that have been renewed daily, that you will fill them with a burden, Lord, for soul, for soul winning, Lord. Make them intercessors, Lord, interceding on the behalf of others. I pray that, Lord, they will just start praying for someone, just writing down a prior list, Lord, or just praying every day for just one person, every single day, just praying for that one person, Lord. We do need more people, Lord, to intercede on the behalf of others because the devil has many souls locked in his chains. Oh, hallelujah. And they cannot escape because they do not have the power or the self-will or the self-control to just pray for themselves, Lord. So for these souls, I pray that you, O oh Lord, will make us intercessors praying for people uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in this manner, Lord. Remind us, Lord, always to depend upon you, for without you, we can do nothing. Thank you, Lord, for this power that comes from prior, Lord. And, you know, as days gone by when grandmothers used to pray, grandfathers used to pray these intercessors, intercessory prayers, and we saw the testimonies of the grandchildren, Lord, of how the enemy uh, was a, was going to destroy them, but how Jesus came and rescued them. Lord, I pray that you, pray, you will put the burden on our hearts to be intercessors for even these people. 
Lord Jesus, I pray that anyone listening to this prayer will understand that they don't have to be old. They can be your person interceding on the behalf of others to break the yoke, break the chains, break the bands that Satan has put on others in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you and Lord, we need that righteousness which is not our own. Father, we don't need self-righteousness. We need Jesus' righteousness. And Father, we claim the blood of Jesus to cover us. We ask that you'd forgive us of our sins. We ask that you would not leave us like you found us, that you would transform us and make us in your image after your likeness. Father, I'm asking for those who have a need of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, you said that the fruits of the Spirit are love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and self-control. Lord, I'm praying for those who desire love and joy and peace. Maybe there's no joy and peace in their home. Maybe there's no self-control in their life. Maybe there's no patience in their life. And these we see are the gifts, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. If we only had your Holy Spirit, Lord, all of these fruits would be evidence in our life. Father, we acknowledge that without being filled with your Spirit, our old nature, you say, are we are by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Father, I'm asking that you would remove that old nature in Jesus. You said, shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? May it never be. How shall we who died to sin continue to live in it? Don't you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? If we were therefore baptized into his death, then we shall also be raised up with him in newness of life, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him, yeah. that our body of sin might be done away with. For he who has died is freed from sin. Father, Jesus did that for us. The cross brought us to the place when we accept Jesus as our Savior, the cross of Jesus Christ says that we need to know, knowing this, that your old self was crucified with him. Father, sometimes we don't feel it, but we accept your word. That's what your word says, and your word will not return to you void without accomplishing that for which you said it. So we're asking that that death, that we received when we were baptized into Christ Jesus would be a living reality. Mm -hmm. Father, and I'm asking now, Father, like, like the scripture says, you had, didn't, they didn't know they were, had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then what were you baptized in? And they were baptized in Christ Jesus. Lord, they needed to know that their old self was crucified with Christ, that their old life of sin was gone because of their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they were ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Father, I'm asking that you would lay your hands on each person who needs a new nature. You said by these great and precious promises, we are to become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Father, there are many here who are experiencing their old nature every day, stealing their peace and their love and their joy. And there is no love, joy, and peace in their homes with their children, with their spouses, with their work, people that they work with. Father, I'm asking that you would wash and cleanse and that the death of Jesus Christ would become their own death and that they would recognize that they were baptized into Christ's death and so they can receive the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised all who have repented, all who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I'm asking that you would baptize us with your Holy Spirit. 
I'm asking that the life of Jesus would come into our life, that it would not be our old self, that self would be crucified with Christ, and that we would have a new life altogether. You said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, I create all things new. Father, we praise your name that in Jesus, everything is brand new. Our old life of sin, our old life of selfishness and pride, our old life of impatience and frustration and anger and envy and, and gossiping and all of those things that's part of our old nature were crucified with Christ. We accept Jesus as death to our old self. Father, I ask that you would fill each person now with your Holy Spirit to take away the void where their old nature has gone into the cross of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that you'd fill us up with all the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. I'm asking that you would make Jesus so real to each person that they would go forth from this day forward and every day as they receive a fresh baptism of your Holy Spirit to be a blessing to others, that we would no longer live and focus on ourselves, because Jesus did not leave, live to, folk, to please himself, but to be a blessing to others. Father, I'm asking that you would do that in our hearts and in our minds, that Jesus would be so real that people, everyone in whom we come in contact, would see that we have been with Jesus, and that his, the light of his countenance would shine on our faces, that our hearts would be overflowing with the love and the compassion that moved the heart of Jesus to, to minister each person. We thank you for hearing our prayers, Father, not because we're worthy, but because we're needy. And because you said, if you being sinful know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask it? Father, we have asked, we have accepted Jesus' death as our own, and we now receive the baptism of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for giving him to us, that you might be honored, that you might be glorified. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so we're moving into our uh, prayer power principles, and we're excited to share with you some principles that we found in prayer and soul winning. And, you know, every, you know, the spirit of Jesus is a missionary spirit. So whenever we are converted, we always have that desire to bring others to Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to share some principles about prior and soul winning. The first one that I wanted to share um, is that it says select someone. So it says select, I'll read the quote, it says select another and still another soul, daily seeking guidance from God laying everything before him in earnest prayer and working in divine wisdom. As you do this, you will see that God will give the Holy Spirit to convict and the power of truth to convert the soul. And when I read that, I was like, that's what we need to do. We just need to select one person and start praying for that person. And you don't have to tell that person that you're praying for them. You just start to pray for them. Yes, yeah. this was my favorite one. Um, for some reason, my underlining was not showing up. Okay. Okay. Um, this one is, there are many souls yearning unutterably for light, for assurance, for strength beyond what they have been able to grasp. They need to be sought out and labored for patiently, perseveringly. Mm -hmm. Beseech the Lord in fervent prayer for help. Present Jesus because you know him as your personal savior. Let his melting love, his rich grace flow forth from human lips. You need not to present doctrinal points unless questioned, but take the word and with tender yearning love for souls, show them the precious righteousness of Christ to whom you and they must come to be saved. That is so beautiful. 
That is powerful. And you, have you seen, you know, if we're not seeking God with all our hearts, we are not cognizant of other people's needs. It's like we just operating in the flesh and just normal, caught up with our normal lives. Mm -hmm. The closer we come to Jesus, like Sister Gabrielle said, if we will have a prayer life, if we will begin to pray for others, if we will be pray for a desire to bring others to Jesus, then the burdens that are on Jesus' heart will start to take possession of our heart, and we will begin to have a burden for the other souls that Jesus died to save. There are people with unutterable, that are souls yearning unutterably for light. That means they're not talking about it. So how are we going to see it? You have to have the heart of Jesus. And he will give you that if you will seek him with all your heart. Amen. All right. Another one that I wanted to share, another prayer power principle. It says, if several should meet together with one accord, with hearts burdened for perishing souls, and should offer earnest, fervent prayers, they would prove effectual. And I like how, you know, at our church, and I know for most churches, they have a prior group. And, you know, at my church, well, Five Oaks, we meet together every Sabbath and we pray for half an hour, you know, 30 minutes of just praying and pouring out your heart to God. So I would encourage you, you know, get with a group of believers and start praying together. And if you can also find some other time where just maybe one or two of you intercede you know pray intercessors and intercessory prayers together you know sometimes it might be at midnight you can wake up in the midnight to pray you know the time is is coming when we won't be able to sleep you know elder david on a on a good schedule i mean a regular schedule you know in the the time when the seven last plagues and the time of trouble we're going to be running for our lives we're going to be in caves you know as the wall dances and we just have to be praying at midnight. So why not start now so that we can learn to pray? Just lose a little sleep, but you're praying <laughs> for, you know, the conversion of soul. Well, the exciting thing is that we don't have to try, you know, it's, it's the whole purpose of being in the, the experiencing the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to let the Holy Spirit be in control of your life. Let him wake you up. He will put the burden on your heart. He will wake you up when it's time to pray. He will show you who to pray for. Yeah. The last couple of days, uh, an old friend from back in my 20s keeps coming up before me, just coming up before me. I'm remembering him. And, and the Lord impressed me, keeps, keeps bringing it to my mind. His mom and dad were interceding for him. Both of the boys had left God and gone their own way and not been a part of religion. But the prayers of those parents are now, it's time, it's time for God to bring them back. Mm -hmm. And God does not forget those prayers, even if, you're, if your parents or your grandparents are dead. Those prayers are still in effect. They're still before the throne of God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is reminding me that I need to intercede for him and that I need to reach out and connect with him because it's time for his parents' prayers to be answered. Amen. Yeah, it's the same thing that happened to me recently. A friend from my childhood just kept like, you know, a few weeks ago, just kept coming to me. And I just wrote the name down on my prior, you know, my prior list. And then I started praying for, for that particular person. So you're right. <laughs> yeah. Here's another one that says, I determined that my efforts should never cease until these dear souls for whom I had so great an interest yielded to god several entire nights were spent by me in earnest prayer for those whom i had sought out and brought together for the purpose of laboring and praying with them at every one of our little meetings i continued to exhort and to pray for each one separately until mm -hmm. everyone had yielded to jesus acknowledging the merits of his pardon pardoning love everyone was converted to god what a testimony would that we would have just a few people. I think she had like tw over 20 people, 18 or 20 people that were her friends when she met Jesus, when she was converted. And she just prayed until they were all converted. Mm -hmm. 
Such is the power of a brand new Christian's faith and prayer when the Holy Spirit takes possession of their minds and their hearts. That's exciting. Yeah, indeed. You know, and another principle that I want to share that I found is that everyone can pray for soul. You know, not everyone will be able to go on a mission trip across the world or somewhere in their country, like, you know, here in the USA and another state, but everyone can ha have the opportunity to pray for souls. Yes. This is another interesting um, quotation. It says, when the gospel net is cast, let there be a watching by the net with tears and earnest prayers. Let the workers determine not to become discouraged and not to let go of the net until it is drawn ashore with the fruit of their labors. Isn't that an interesting picture of mm -hmm. casting out a net and watching it and praying? It, nothing will happen if we're not praying. <laughs> the disciples learned that, right? They were <laughs> fishing all night long and didn't yeah. catch not one fish. And Jesus said, put the net on the other side. Well, okay, we haven't caught anything all night, but as soon as they obeyed Jesus, they had 170 some fish. There was so many that it was capsizing their boat. This is the lesson. If we will unite with Jesus, if we will connect with him and his power, there will be fruit. There will be souls that are saved. Yeah. Jesus said, look up, out upon the fields for they're white and ready for harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. He says, therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest that he would send, therefore, laborers into the harvest. So if there's someone that you're not close to that you can't connect with yourself, mm -hmm. intercede, say, Lord, send laborers into the harvest. That's what I began doing for one of my sons. Mm -hmm. He was really struggling, and I prayed and I said, Lord, I don't know how to reach him. I tried to bring him to Jesus, tried to show him how to come to Jesus. But sometimes there's barriers. And, and so I said, Lord, send laborers into the harvest. Send somebody else. And, and the Lord got him a new job. And his boss led him to Jesus. And what a conversion. He said, he says, he, the Lord would keep him up nights. And he would just be filled with the love of God and just seeing G what Jesus had 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 done for him and how he had rejected and neglected Jesus all of his life. And here Jesus was just showing up in his room and becoming so real to him. Praise God. If you can't bring somebody to Jesus yourself, ask the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the harvest. That's just powerful. You know, another principle that I wanted to, uh, to share is that, um where was it yeah it's right here i just had it right here yes it it was about um like praying for souls take your minds off of your little concern so it was just saying that you know present to the church you know, the needs of others. And then has, as the church starts to pray, close the door. when the church starts to pray, you know, for the, the needs of others, then, you know, they, their eyes are taken off their little concerns and then they are involved in earnest prayer for the salvation and conversion of other souls. As Christians, if we are not praying for others, then we start pointing our discernment and instead of looking at people in the world we start looking at each other and finding fault with each other that's kind of typically how the enemy works if we're not having a concern and a burden for souls then we are doing a negative work in the church looking at finding fault with people <laughs> yes you know you know there's a hymn that says rescue the perishing care for the dying and there are many people around us you know our neighbors our co-workers people that we talk with on the phone, um, just people that we come in contact with, they are perishing and they just need that light. And I, I believe that God is calling us to turn our eyes from our own problems 
and to start being intercessors, burden bearers for these souls that are perishing, especially to us who have received salvation, who have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. It is our duty to pray on behalf of these souls that are perishing in darkness. And some of them, they probably, their lives, their lives, go, their light to go out. I mean, they die without ever getting an opportunity. So this is something that I hope we can pray for more. This yeah, principle what? we can adopt. We need to put our, sometimes it's helpful for us to put ourselves in their place. What would we do if we had no light and we had no peace, we had no joy in Jesus, we had no place to lay our burdens when we're struggling and, and no one to come to with our struggles. I wonder if we were without, without hope or God in the world, wouldn't we want somebody to come to us? Of course we would. Mm -hmm. We need to realize that there are people who are waiting for the joy of salvation, who are waiting for the peace that passes understanding, yes. waiting for, for the joy of salvation that G only Jesus can give, that assurance that we're, our life is hidden with Christ in God, that we have been saved from our sin, that the, our past is put on the cross, and we are living a life filled with his spirit, full of his joy, filled with his goodness. And it just flows out to others. That's, yeah. that's, there's no greater life. And yeah. there are people who are desiring what we have. Yeah, that, that's what I was, I was going to make a point that I was, I was going to say that, have you ever looked at some Christian and you probably heard their story of like how many, how many difficulties and rough waters they're in, but they, they are, they are, they are um, so joyful. They have this calm assurance and you wonder like, I've heard the testimony of that sister or that brother and man, I, I had no idea. That's horrible. But when you look at them, you just see the, the love of Jesus, the peace that passes our understanding and you wonder like, What's the difference? And then you look at someone who is not a Christian and you see that they ha probably have the same experience and they're drinking, they're smoking. And then you're like, what, what, what? I, I don't know what to make of the two. Why is it that one looks so calm? And then one is, you know, like the alcohol and the drugs and so on. And the answer is just when you find Jesus, you can live above every attack the enemy as on you and maybe it's because someone is praying for you <laughs> i'm sure thankful for a mother that prayed for me she spent nights awake while i was out sowing wild oats and getting in trouble i i would, probably wouldn't have survived I, not going into detail but it's a wonder I survived and I'm Amen. praising God for a mother that prayed, prayed for me. Yeah. All right. I think we're almost out of time. So we could just share one more uh, principle or something that is on your mind. Um, something that, you know, spoke to you, you know, in this chapter. Well, um, this is a quotation. Um, So it's taken from Desire of Ages uh, 672, and it says, um, There are many who believe and profess to claim the Lord's promises. They talk about Christ and about the Holy Spirit, yet receive no benefit. They do not surrender the, the soul to be guided and controlled by the divine agency. We cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to use us. Through the Spirit, God's works in His people to will and to do of His good pleasure. But many will not submit to this. They want to manage themselves. 
This mm -hmm. is why they do not receive the heavenly gift. Yeah. Only those who will wait humbly upon God, who will watch for his guidance and grace, is the spirit given. The power of God awaits their demand and reception. Mm -hmm. Take the promise and say, Lord, you promise. You said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses for me. Take mm -hmm. hold of that promise. Jesus mm -hmm. promised you when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will take the things of mine and reveal them to you. Take hold of those promises and don't let go of Jesus until he blesses you and fills you with his spirit. And be willing to, to yield. Let the Holy Spirit be in control of you. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be so interested in being doing everything you want to do, doing everything your way. Let Jesus be Lord. Let Jesus take control. You'll be amazed how exciting your life is when Jesus is in control. Yeah, be humble. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's it. All right, so we thank you so much for joining us today for another episode of Prior Power Principles as we shared power principles involved in prior and soul winning. And I pray that today, if you don't know where to start, just start by making a prior list, writing down people that you want to pray for and just pray for them every day. And then the Holy Spirit will lead you from there into being an intercessor as you yield more and more over onto him. Well, Elder David, today was very wonderful. I, I enjoyed this, this chapter so much, you know, because every disciple, every person who has been born again has that longing, that burden to bring others to Jesus also. That's right. Yes. All right, so before we do our closing prayer, we just want to remind you, if you have a prayer request, please send them to prayerpowerprinciples at gmail.com, and we will be praying with you. Let us pray. Righteous Eternal Father, we thank you today that you are our Father and our friend. You are our High Priest, who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. We thank you, Lord, that you are in the most holy place, interceding on our behalf. Lord, sometimes we pray, we do not know how to say it, Lord, how to speak it, but we thank Jesus who translate our prayers up to God as sweet incense. Lord, today, as we discuss the principles involved in prayer and soul winning, make us intercessors, Lord. Help us to pray for the souls of others who the enemy has captured. Lord, teach us to be patient. Teach us to, to be loving. Teach us to be kind. Teach us to be... Um, long suffering just as jesus lord in short lord we're just asking us for you to fill us with the holy spirit so that we can bear the fruit of the holy spirit help us to stay connected to the vine because we know that it's not by might nor by power but everything by your holy spirit in jesus precious name we pray amen amen praise the lord and see you next see you next time